This week on Inside Builder News, City hosts webinar for property owners who could be impacted by commercial energy efficiency ordinance, the community weighs in on three design proposals for the civic area, and RTD considers service levels for bus rapid transit to and from Boulder. Welcome to Inside Boulder News, I'm Ashley Prill. In support of the community's long-term commitment to energy efficiency, the City of Boulder is developing an ordinance that would require commercial and industrial building owners to collect and report their energy use data. These requirements could go into effect as early as 2016 and ultimately impact owners of buildings greater than 20,000 square feet. The city has encouraged and supported a voluntary rating and reporting program for a number of years. And this is in addition to several other energy efficiency programs such as Energy Smart and Partners for a Clean Environment. So the requirements that we're discussing now would move beyond these voluntary programs and require actions that would reduce energy use and improve the quality of Boulder's commercial and industrial building stock. So the ordinance may have two parts. The first part would require building owners to measure the energy performance of their building on an annual basis. And then the second part would require the implementation of energy efficiency measures that would be phased in over time. The city is hosting a webinar on March 18th to introduce proposed requirements and a compliance timeline, review the benefits of measuring and managing building energy use, and collect feedback and answer questions. The webinar would be beneficial for commercial and industrial building owners of buildings 20,000 square feet or larger, property managers, commercial real estate brokers, energy service professionals, or any other interested community members. For additional information about proposed requirements for commercial and industrial buildings, or to register for the webinar on March 18th, visit boulderbuildingperformance.com. It was a big week for the Civic Area Project as the city held an open house featuring three options to redesign the park between Arapahoe Avenue and Canyon Boulevard from 9th to 13th. The meeting was well attended. Uh, we had a lot of great comments and feedback about different options to help make the park the most successful it can be. Uh, we had a lot of folks weighing in on specific items like the playground, the creek path, the band shell, some of the existing uses, but also giving great feedback on what are the possibilities and opportunities that could come about with some of these new park designs. Revamping the park is the first step in the Civic Area Master Plan, which aims to create a more inviting space for the community to enjoy. Over the next few months, staff will incorporate feedback on the three park designs to develop one recommended plan. Once we attend council in June with the preferred plan, our goal would be to move into a more specific site design process and ultimately start construction in early 2016. While the design process is going on, there are plenty of upcoming events and programs to make the civic area vibrant, including the return of the Farmer's Market on April 4th, the celebration for the main library renovation completion on April 11th, and the Boulder Craft Beer Festival on August 22nd. To view the design plans and materials, provide feedback, or email the project manager for the Boulder Civic Area Project, visit bouldercivicarea.com. Calling all kids and families who have getting fit on their list of 2015 resolutions. The Boulder Parks and Recreation Department is hosting a youth and family health fair this Saturday, March 14th. The interactive health fair is the first of its kind in the state, offering free access to community health resources in collaboration with local partners. The City of Boulder Parks and Recreation Department really wants to focus on the Year of the Child. Um, so we decided to put this event on. It's going to focus on nutrition, health, wellness, safety. Um, it's it's going to be pretty amazing. The fire department's going to be coming and they're going to be doing a distracted driving activity. American Heart's coming. They're making healthy smoothies. We have a nutritionist coming making healthy snacks such as hummus and veggies. Pearl Vision will be coming and doing a free eye exam for youth. We're also going to be having doctors here talking about concussions and sports. Um, and then also personal trainers on site to help families and youth know how to use our weight equipment properly and efficiently. Again, the event is free and will be held from 9 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. at the North Boulder Recreation Center. Free child care for children aged 2 and up is available from 8.30 to 3.30. For all the details, visit boulderparks-rec.org. If you ever travel outside of Boulder, odds are pretty good that you've become familiar with the construction on US 36. 
As RTD nears the completion of at least this phase of work, the focus is turning to new service levels for public transportation. On Monday, March 16th, RTD will hold a public meeting in Boulder to discuss its proposed US 36 Bus Rapid Transit Service Plan. Special buses under the name Flatiron Flyer will be used for the program, which is designed to be fast, reliable, and convenient. So there will be special uh, buses being used for this and um, stations along the corridor. And the idea with bus rapid transit is that it's rapid. It's fast, it's reliable, it's convenient. You can access the service without a schedule. You can come to the station and you'll know that with a, within a few minutes, the bus will be there to take you to your destination. Your feedback is important in determining how bus rapid transit can best connect the community of Boulder with other Front Range communities along and beyond US 36 when the service begins next January. The service would connect to downtown Boulder Transit Center as well as Boulder Junction at Depot Square, the new transit station that's being built now. Um, and so we want to understand for people where, what do you need from the, the service there and how can we work uh, with the 36 Corridor Coalition and RTD to deliver that service for the community. The meeting will be held at the Boulder Public Library starting at 6 p.m. in the Boulder Creek Room. If you can't make the meeting, you can still provide feedback by faxing comments to 303-299-2227 or emailing service.changes at rtddenver.com by May 1st. More information about the service plan can also be found at goboulder.net slash transit. Registration is underway for the Boulder Police Department's free Safety First for Adults class. Safety First for Adults is a five-week program designed to provide safety tips to adults in our community with cognitive or developmental disabilities. People that are living in the community um, always have a goal of wanting to be more independent. So it's, this, it's the same for people that are living in the community that have some kind of developmental disability or maybe a cognitive delay. So we just try to support them in living independently and having that awareness around safety is really critical. One of my favorite parts about the program is just that relationship that we're able to develop and encourage between law enforcement, so people that are in the uniform that are out in the community and this, this special population of folks who are also out in the community. So it's really about building that relationship, establishing trust and getting to know each other. The class is taught by Boulder police officers through a combination of lectures, small groups, and hands-on activities and will be held every Thursday in April from 4 to 6 p.m. at the Public Safety Building. The registration deadline is Thursday, March 19th. For more information or to sign up, please contact Chris Gibson at 303-441-3332 or email her at gibsonkr at bouldercolorado.gov. For the third year in a row, Boulder Fire Rescue firefighters will have their heads shaved to show their support for kids in our community who are fighting cancer. On March 17th, the firefighters will join the St. Baldrick's Day celebration at Centennial Middle School to help fund research for childhood cancer. So in addition to responding on calls and educating the public about fire safety, we also like to support the community by participating in, in public events. And this is one that a lot of our firefighters kind of hold personal, whether it's a, a connection with, you know, a family member or a family friend, it's something else that really touches them personally. Boulder Fire Rescue will face off against the Boulder Police Department in a dodgeball tournament before the head shaving begins at 5 p.m. To date, Boulder Fire Rescue has raised over $20,000 for St. Baldrick's. To donate or to learn more about the event, visit stbaldrick's.org and search for the Centennial Cyclones for Bald Heads. Thanks for watching Inside Boulder News. Stay in touch with us on Facebook and Twitter by submitting news tips and questions. You can also sign up to receive video updates right in your inbox. Just go to boulderchannel8.com and click on subscribe.